Our topic for today is Drug Prevention Program and Law Enforcement Efforts. So, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency or PDEA is the implementing arm of DDB or Dangerous Drug Board and they are also responsible for the efficient and effective law enforcement of all the provisions on any dangerous drug or controlled precursor and essential chemical. So it means to say, when it involves drugs, automatically they need to advise the PDEA for the operation. Okay? So the head is a director general and automatically it is appointed by the president of the Philippines. And the head or the director general is assisted by two deputy director general. So one for administration, the other one is for operation. It is also appointed by the president. Okay? So, PIDEA operating units is absorbed from the NDLE, PCC, or created under EO61 from NARCOM of the PNP, Narcotics Division of the NBI, and the Customs Narcotics Interdiction. So, ibig sabihin, yung pagkakakreate ng PIDEA, bago sila naging PIDEA, nanggaling sila sa uh, Narcotics Command ng Philippine National Police, Narcotics Division of NBI, and the Custom Narcotics. So, doon nang galing yung PIDEA uh, operating units. Okay? So, what are the power and function of PIDEA? First, cause the effective and efficient implementation of the National Drug Control. So, sila ang nagko-control. No, ibig sabihin, kung masyado ng mataas, masyado ng marami yung kwan, kailangan nilang kontrolin, kailangan nilang paliitin yung nagtitake ng drugs or nagbibenta ng drugs. Okay? Enforcement of the provisions of Article 2 of this Act. Undertake investigation, make arrest and apprehension of violators, and seizure and confiscation of dangerous Drag. So, sila ang nag i sila ang nag-aaresto ng mga violators ng drugs. Okay? Then, establish of forensic laboratories. So, pag sinabi natin establish forensic laboratories, so, nagpapakot sila ng mga laboratories para ma-examine yung mga drugs na nakukuha. Okay? Filing appropriate drug cases. So, sila mismo ang nagpa-file ng uh, drug cases. Okay? They also conduct eradication program tulad ng mga marijuana plantation dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Maintain a national drug intelligence system. So, mayroong intelligence system sa buong Pilipinas ang PIDEA. Now, Nagagather sila ng mga information kung saan yung mga malalaking bagsakan ng drugs, yung mga ganun. Usually, uh, yung mga areas, totally kulang yung numbers ng PDEA, hindi katulad ng kasing dami ng pulis. So, na, medyo nahihirapan yung mga PDEA intelligence officers natin. Okay? Close coordination with local and international drug agencies. So, yung taga-ibang bansa, nagko-coordinate sila para ma-pinpoint yung mga pinanggagalingan ng drugs and makakuha din sila ng information sa mga ibang partner agency nila sa ibang bansa. Okay? So, the original plans or of plans against drug problems. So, these are the of plan na tinatawag natin. Okay? First is of plan Thunderbolt. Operation to create impact to the underworld. So, ito yung pinag-uusapan natin na mga organized crime 
groups. No. So, yung operation uh, under uh, Thunderbolt 1 is ini-ensure na mayroon silang plan doon para mas makita nila yung mga ginagawa ng mga underworld. So, ibig sabihin, matagalang proseso to, no Matagalang uh, intelligence gathering. Okay? So, upland Thunderbolt 2. So, the operation to neutralize suspected illegal drug laboratories. Yung 2 naman, Thunderbolt 2, eto naman is yung mga tinitingnan nila is yung mga drug laboratories dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Usually, uh, dati ginagawa yan sa mga maluluwang na area. Ngayon, ginagawa na lang sa mga high-end condominium. No? Mas gusto kasi ng mga mga drug pushers, uh, drug manufacturers na doon na lang sa mga high-end na condominium para mas mahirap ma-detect ng mga pideya kasi hindi sila basta-basta nagpapapasok doon ng kung sino-sino. Kaya doon sila nagpapatay ng mga laboratories. Ang mga uh, tawag doon is kitchen type laboratories. Okay? Next is Oplantar Thunderbolt 3. Operations for the neutralization of big time drug pushers, drug dealers, and drug lords. So, eto yung mga big time. Yung talagang bilyon, milyon ang kinikita sa pagpupush ng drug. So, tali, hindi ko alam kung mayroon pang natitira na mga big time drug pushers kasi lahat sila nagtumba nung nagkaroon tayo ng tinatawag ng war on drugs. Okay? Upland Iceberg. Special operations team is selected to drug prone areas in order to get rid of illegal drug activities in that area. So, ibig sabihin, doon sila sa mga matataas ang case ng drugs. So, iniimbestigahan yung mga pasimuno doon at yun yung mga hinukule para bumaba or mawala yung drug cases doon. For example, yung Ordaneta, oh, hindi ko nang sinasabi na yung Ordaneta is uh, maraming drugs. No? Uh, may mga areas dyan na meron noon. Ngayon, ang ginagawa is hinuhuli. Nagbabaiba, sinuhuli. So, hanggang nawala yung drugs doon sa area iyon. Okay? Oplan Hunters. So, operations against suspected military and police personnel who are engaged in illegal drug activities. So, mayroon din silang Oplan Hunter. Kasi, hindi naman ibig sabihin na nasa military service, nasa police service or law enforcement service, malinis na sila. So, mayroon din katawag na internal cleansing. So, tinitiktikan din tong mga military, police na gumagamit. Yung mga iba is uh, nagiging protector, yung mga iba is nagiging drug pusher. Pero, hindi natin nilalahat. Meron lang mga nagkamali ng landas. Okay? Oplan, Mercurion. Okay? Operations against drug stores which are violating existing regulations on the scale of regulated drugs in coordination with DDB, DOH, and BPAD. So, bakit? So, yung mga drug store na to, nagbebenta ng uh, drugs. Yung hindi OTC. No? Kasi, mas mapapabilis yung pagbebenta nila na illegal drugs. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na yung isang drugstore is nagbebenta ng marijuana, shabu. No. Yung mga illegal drugs lang. No. Tulad ng diazepam, so nakakakuha sila kahit walang uh, prescription. Yung mga hindi, yung kailangan ng prescription, no. Binibenta nila kahit walang prescription. Yun yung Oplan Melkoro yun na tinatawag natin. Yung mga OTC, dapat ibigay. No. Yung mga hindi OTC, yung kailangan ng prescription na ginagamit, ina-abuse na drugs, nakakalabas pa rin. So, pag ganun yung case, tinatrabaho din ng mga FIDEA in coordination with DOH and BPAD. Next is Oplan Tornado. Okay? Operations in drug notorious and high profile places. Kung tatanungin nyo, sir, ba't parang naulit? So, hindi siya naulit. Ito naman yung high profile 
places na tinatawag natin. Ano ba yung mga high profile places na yan? Tulad ng disco house, no, nightclub, bear house, no. Karamihan kasi dito sila nagdi-deal, no. Dito sila nagkakaroon ng transaction at doon na mismo ginagamit yung drugs. Okay? Next is Oplan Green Gold. Okay? Green Gold. No. Bakit Green Gold? Kasi mahal ang benta ng marijuana. Nationwide MJ Eradications operations in coordination with local governments and NGOs. So, dito sa part natin sa Norte, maraming MJ no? or marijuana na tinatawag natin. Especially sa mga uh, mountainous, uh, mountainous part. No. So, dito sila nagtatanim. Ngayon, si Oakland Green Gold naman, tinitrace nila kung saan yung plantation ng mga marijuana yan. Okay? Next is Oakland Sagip Yagit. Okay? A civic program initiated by the NGOs and local government offices to help eradicate drug syndicates involving street children as a drug conduit. Okay, ang ginagawa kasi ng mga drug syndicate, kinukuha yung mga bata at ginagawang uh, transporter para hindi mahalata. Kasi ang mga bata hindi naman pag na million pala yung hawak niyang plastic, kala mo basura lang. No, so ipapahatid, so yatid mo to, hanggang bigyan lang ng konting pera, okay na sila. So ganun yung ginagawa sa Oplan Yagit. So they trace na ginagamit nilang kasangkapan tong mga uh, street children na tinatawag natin in the operations of drugs. Next is Oplan Banat. Okay, the newest operational plan against drug abuse focus in the barangay level in cooperation with barangay officials. So, eto naman, in-involve na yung mga barangay officials para matrace mismo yung drug problem doon sa mismong community. So, yun yung Oplan Banat. So, directly, doon na sila mismo sa barangay. So, kinukuha yung profile ng mga addicts doon at hinuhuli nila as long as there is evidence in coordination with barangay officials. Okay? Next is Oplan Atina. So, operation conducted to neutralize the 14K, the Bambugang, and the other local organized crime groups involved in illegal trafficking. So, yung mga 14K, Bambugang, uh, nagkalat lang dito sa Pilipinas. So, usually sila yung main transporter, uh, sila mismo yung nagbabagsak ng drugs dito sa Pilipinas. Okay? Next is Oplan Cyclops. Operations against Chinese triad members involved in the illegal drugs operation, particularly methamphetamine hydrochloride or tinatawag nating shabu. So, responsible naman sila sa pagtitrace ng mga Chinese triads dito sa Pilipinas. Pag sinabi natin, Oplan Cyclops. Okay? So, coverage of the rules. First, we have the so-called Bahibas operation. So, what is a bypass operation? So, a form of entrapment employed by peace officers as an effective way of apprehending criminal in the act of commission of the offense. So, ngayon, ang isang bypass, according sa mga kasama natin, is dapat meron ka ng uh, body cam para ma-record mo yung bypass operation. So, yun yung bago daw, no? So, dapat na video kung paano nakuha yung drugs. So, search for drug evidence with warrant. So, pinapailan yan if there is a sufficient grounds para makapag-issue ng uh, search warrant, sila search yan. Okay? Next is marijuana eradication. Tulad ng sinasabi ko, yung marijuana eradication medyo uh, mahirap gawin kasi Sino mang mas gustong magtanim ng palay kung mas malaki naman ang kikitain mo doon sa marijuana, especially on the mountainous part na hindi naman uh, accessible yung tubig. So, tinahanap nila, nilolocate nila kung saan yung plantation at sinusunog nila. 
kumukuha lang ng konting ebidensya at sinusunog nila yung uh, plantation ng marijuana. Kaya lang problema, hindi naman nahuhuli yung mga nagtatanim. Kasi bago pa sila makapunta sa area, natutulog na yung nagtatanim, nakatakbo na. No? Kasi sa sobrang liblib ng lugar. Okay? Airport and seaport interdiction involves the conduct of surveillance, interception, and interdiction of persons and evidence during travel by air or sea vessel. So, mayroong mga taong uh, nakalagay doon na intelligence officer para i-observe yung mga flow ng mga uh, products. No? Sinusurveillance nila, yung mga suspected, pinapalo kahit saan para makakuha sila ng ebidensya at makuha yung ma-intercept nila yung mga drugs na tinatransport. Next is controlled delivery. So, paano naman yung sinasabi nating controlled delivery? Okay? So, ganito ang ginagawa nila. No? So, pinapalo nila or sinusundan nila yung isang tao para i-deliver yung drugs. So, ang purpose nito is hindi hulihin mismo yung may dala ng drugs. Okay? Ang ginagawa nila is para ma-identify nila kung sino pa yung ibang tao na involved sa drug operations na yun. Okay? Next is undercover operations. So, an investigative technique in which the personnel involved assumes different identities in order to obtain necessary information. Okay? For example, ako, identify ko yung isang drug organization. So, pupunta ako doon using different identities para manmanan yung drug operations nila. Okay? Hindi ko gagamitin. For example, ako yung PIDEA officers, hindi ko gagamitin yung totoong pangalan ko. So, gagawa ako ng cover story para masurveillance lahat ng operations nila at ma-identify kung sino yung mga nagpapatakbo ng drug organization. Yun yung tinatawag nating undercover operations at isa sa mga pinaka- Mahirap. Kasi, pag na-burn out ka, nako, pangalan mo na lang yung uuwi. Kung uuwi pa yung pangalan mo. No. Next is, stages of operation. First phase, or yung tinatawag natin initial stage. So, nagkakaroon ng planning and preparations, which include surveillance, casing, reconnaissance, and other preliminary activities. So, ibig sabihin, hindi naman basta-basta silang nag operate agad. So, kailangan muna nilang i-verify yung target. Kailangan nilang i-identify yung area, titingnan kung gaano kalalim yung operations nila, kung sino yung mga involved, at kung ano yung pinapatakbong drugs doon. Okay? Kung meron na silang sapat na ebidensya, sapat na informasyon, doon na sila nagkakandak ng tinatawag nating operation. Okay? So, phase 2, action and post-action stage. Tactical interrogation. Sa tingin nyo, pag nahuli, doon na ba tumitigil yung operation? No. Nagkakaroon pa yun ng tactical operation. So, ini-interrogate yung nahuling suspect para mapalabas nila yung mga iba pang alam ng taong iyon. So, yun yung pinaka-importante kasi. Hindi ibig sabihin, nahuli mo na yung drug pusher. Wala na. Mayroon pang mas malaking pinagkukunan nito. At ma-identify mo pa kung sino yung mga taong sinusuplayan niya at pinagkukuhanan niya. Yun yung purpose ng tactical interrogation. Okay? Usually, marami silang nakukuha during tactical interrogation na naglilid sa mga iba't ibang arrest or sometimes nakukuha nila yung pinaka-ugat. Okay? Tulad ng nakikita natin sa TV na nakuha nila yung uh, big time uh, drug pushers, ilang kilo ng shabu. Totally, that is the result of tactical interrogation. Next is post-operation and custodial investigation. And after that, prosecution of offense, filing of case, okay? and then trial. And Resolution. Usually, as an agent, kailangan na mag-assist ka during the operation. Hindi lang sa operation ng paghuli, 
magkakaroon din ng investigation, tactical interrogation, tapos magpa-file ka ng case and you will stand as a witness in court hanggang magkaroon ng resulta yung penile mong case. Next is general drug testing. So, ano ba yung general drug testing natin? So, meron tayong klase ng drugs. Meron tayong test use and yung color reaction. Okay? So, pag opium, ang ginagamit na test is Marquis test. Ito, no, Marquis test. And, ang dapat na lumabas na kulay doon sa test kit is purple or violet. Okay? Pag heroin naman, ang ginagamit na test is nitric acid and lumalabas na reaction or color reaction is yellow green. Okay? Next is morphine. Ginagamit din, same with heroin kasi pareha sila. No, nitric acid. Pero ang lalabas na kulay is red orange. Okay? Next is cocaine. Okay? Ang cocaine ginagamitan ng cobalt thiazinate and the result color is blue. Okay? Next is barbiturates. So dalawa yung ginagamit sa barbiturates. Uh, dial company test or Zwicker test na tinatawag natin. Kung dahil kufanyi test ang gagamitin, ang lalabas sa kanya is violet. Pag Zwicker test naman is blue color. Okay? Next is amphetamines. So, ang amphetamines, same. Yung gagamitin kay opium. Parehas na Marquis test. So, pero iba yung kulay na lalabas. So, red si amphetamines kumpara kay purple, violet, kay opium. So, red, orange, or brown. Okay? Next is LSD. LSD stands for lysergic acid diatelamide. So, ang ginagamit naman sa kanya is PABA. No? Para amino benzoic acid. So, ang lumalabas na color reaction is purple. Okay? Next is marijuana. Okay? Juconus Leben test or key and test na tinatawag natin. Okay? Red bottom layer ang lumalabas doon sa test na yun. Okay? Next is shabu. Okay? Ang shabu ginagamit ng Simon's test. Ang lalabas na kulay is purple. So, let's go now to National Campaign Strategies. First, meron tayong Demand Reduction Strategy. So, ano ba yung Demand Reduction Strategy? This strategy can be carried out to the following. First, Prevention or Preventive Education and Information Campaigns to Prevent Further Demand of Society, Particularly the youths. So, ang ginagawa nila is nagkakaroon ng education and information control. Especially, specifically on the ill effects of drugs. So, pinapakita dito kung ano yung impact ng drugs sa buhay ng tao. Okay? Next is treatment and rehabilitation of drug dependence. So, there are three programs regarding on the rehabilitation on drug dependence. So, yun yung part ng demand reduction strategy. How about in supply reduction? So, supply na pinag-uusaman natin. Kasi on the part of demand, kasi yung mga tao bumibili. No. Ngayon, syempre, magpapakita sila ng facts about the ill effects of drugs, sa tingin nyo, gagamit ka pa ba kung mababaliw ka naman? So, no. So, mababawasan yung yung bibili ng drugs. Okay? Now, in supply naman, doon mismo sa supply ng 
drugs. So, ang ginagawa nila dito is dangerous drug law enforcement. So, hinuhuli yung mga nagbibenta, criminal prosecute on the part of judicial and legislative measures. So, yun yung the part ng supply reduction strategy. Okay? Next is international cooperation strategy. So, eto na yung nakikipag-coordinate sila sa ibang bansa. No? So, yung mga PIDEA nakikipag-usap sa other drug agencies ng iba't ibang bansa. Wherein, nagpapalitan sila ng information regarding sa mga operation ng mga drug syndicate natin. So, ano ba yung kwan ng international cooperation strategy? Tulad ng international interdictions. So, yung mga drug pushers dito sa Pilipinas na galing sa ibang bansa, pwedeng i-deport, yung mga ganon. No? Coordination with the inter- Paul, or yung tinatawag natin international police. So, kino-coordinate kung may mga leads yung mga uh, suspected drug pushers na galing sa ibang bansa. Okay? Linkages with the ASEAN community and UN anti-drug convention. So, nagkakaroon sila ng drug conventions. Okay? Next is United Nation International Drug Control Program or UND. CP. So, the UNDCP was established in 1991 pursuant to General Assembly Resolution 45-179 of December 21, 1990. Okay? The UNDCP is mandated by General Assembly with the exclusive responsibility, leadership for all anti-nation drug control activities. In order to ensure coherence of actions, coordination, and non-duplication of such activities in the United Nations. So, they are responsible on drug control program. Okay? Yun yung tinatawag natin na UNDCP. So, International Drug Control Program. So, there are different programs to ensure that the supply will be reduced. Next is treatment and rehabilitation approach. Okay? Treatment, the medical service rendered to a client for the effective management of physical and mental conditions related to drug abuse. So, eto na yung pinupunta natin sa rehabilitation uh, facility para matanggal yung paggamit niya ng drugs, physical and mental. Okay? Next is, the part of treatment is depolyation. It is a medically supervised elimination of drugs from the system of any addicted person or clean up flush out nila yung drugs sa katawan ng isang uh, addict para mawala na yung drugs sa system niya at makalimutan niya rin yung paggamit ng drugs. Okay? Kaya lang, nagkakaroon ng tinatawag nating cold turkey. No. Ito yung tinatawag nating withdrawal syndrome. So, yung, for example, is nanginginig, balisa, yung mga symptoms ng uh, withdrawal. No. So, that's normal on part of treatment. Kasi tinatanggal na yung drugs sa system ng isang tao. Next is reduction method. Okay? Using the same drug to which the patient is dependent. The process could be gradual or rapid. No. Ano ba yung reduction method na sinasabi natin? On the part of reduction method is inuunti-unting tanggalin. No. For example, naninigarilyo. So, para matanggal yung paninigarilyo, nauubos na sa isang araw is isang kaha. So, bawasan mo ng, ng lima. No. I-smoke niya na lang sa isang araw is sampo. Example lang. Tapos, next day, sham. Hanggang paliit ng paliit yung naipapasok niyang drugs doon sa katawan. Hanggang masanay na siya na walang drugs sa katawan niya. That is on the part of reduction method. 
Next is rehabilitation. The dynamic process directed towards the physical, emotional, psychological, vocational, social, and spiritual change to prepare a person to the fullest life compatible with his capabilities and render him able to become a law-abiding and productive member of the community without abusing drugs. Okay? So, that is on the part of rehabilitation. On the part of treatment, it is a medical service rendered to a client for the effective manage management of his total condition related to drug abuse. Deals with the psychological or psychosocial complications arising from drug abuse. So, it is important to treat drug abuses. Kasi pag napabayaan ako, psychological, bagsak nun, or psychosocial. So, relationship sa mga uh, kapamilya niya. Okay? Next is enabling. Any action taken by a concerned person that removes or softens the negative effect of harmful consequence of drug use upon the user. Okay? So, eto naman, yung ginagawa dito sa enabling is merong isang tao na tutulong para mabawasan yung negative effect ng drugs sa drug users. Okay? Next is methods. So, first is psycho therapeutic method. So, individual therapy. This involves a one-to-one -one relationship whose aim is to help the patient reduce his drug-abusing behavior and develop insight into his condition. So, sa individual therapy, so dapat uh, malapit na kapamilya yung gagawa ng individual at therapy. Kasi ang mahirap sa mga addicts is mahirap silang magtiwala. No? So, dapat kung ibang tao man to, makabuild up ng magandang relationship para mas, masya, uh, mas magandang ma-employ yung individual therapy. Okay? Next is group therapy. This is a form of therapy where the individual is helped to a group process. Okay, so i-introduce siya sa group na mga addicts, so magkwentuhan niyang mga yan, sasabihin nila yung mga experience nila hanggang ma-analyze niya, ma-appreciate niya na mali pala yung ginagawa niyang pag-take ng drugs. Yun yung ginagawa sa group therapy. So, nagtutulungan sila para hindi na bumalik sa pagkamit ng drugs. Okay? Next is unconstructed group therapy. The role of the therapist can be assumed by the entire group or group members. Okay? In the therapeutic community, the group therapy is commonly used among other two group encounter, verbal haircut or tongue lashing group member na tinatawag natin, group memes or uh, group games, parang iba na yung tingin ko, and family encounter. So that is on the part of Un unconstructed group therapy. Okay? Next is the family therapy. This is a form of intervention based on recognition that while the family as a primary social unit can be a source of problem leading to drug abuse. Okay? Can also be a powerful factor in improving the behavior of the drug dependent. So, the family therapy may include the restructuring of the family, environmental manipulating, strengthening family communication, and discovering potential of family member to help facilitate the rehabilitation of the drug dependent. So, alam nyo, uh, medyo marami din. Yung cost ng drug abuse nila is because of family. So, kahit anong rehabilitation program ang ginagawa natin pagbalik nila sa pamilya nila, nakikita na naman nila yung problema kaya bumabalik sila sa pag-drugs. No. In 
uh, family therapy, ito yung ini-improve. Ini-improve nila yung situation ng uh, pamilya niya para hindi na siya bumalik sa pagtitake ulit ng drugs. Okay? Next is the spiritual and religious means. So, alam naman na natin pag ganito, no? This is the development of moral and spiritual values of the drug dependent. So, binabalik natin siya sa Panginoon. So, pinagsisimba natin hanggang ma-appreciate niya lahat about life. Okay? So, that is on the spiritual and religious means. Okay? Next is the follow-up and after care. Okay? The process of rehabilitation does not end upon the release or discharge of client for a center. So, hindi ibig sabihin na porke nag-rehabilitation center ka, tapos na. No. So, nagkakaroon to ng aftercare services na tinatawag natin. Okay? For the period of not, not more than 18 months. So, the officers of DSWD uh, dinadalaw yung nagpa-rehabilitate. Okay? Titignan nila kung nagbago. Kung hindi nagbago, ibabalik ulit yun sa rehabilitation center. Next, duration of rehabilitation. If the patient is found to be an opiate abuser, the treatment prescribed, uh, prescribed shall be for a period of not less than 6 months. If that is an opiate abuser. No. Kaya lang, kung iba, so magbabago din kung ilang months. So, depende sa behavior ng isang tao. Next is criteria of rehabilitation. First, the patient achieves a drug pre existence. Okay, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi na siya nagte-trade ng uh, drugs. Next is he becomes adjusted to his family and peers. So, dapat alam na niyang makipag uh, ayos sa pamilya at saka mga kakilala niya. So, hindi na nakikipag-away, no. Then, socially client is not involved in social deviant behaviors, uh, behaviors or hindi na siya nagpa-participate uh, nagpa sa uh, violent behaviors na tinatawag natin. Next is educational process. Drug abuse prevention education. Drug abuse education prevention is concerned with bringing about changes in the people's knowledge attitude and practices towards drug abuse. So, napaka-importante yung education sector natin para mabawasan yung paggamit ng drugs or totally mawala. Okay? Napaka-importante kasi na ginagawa natin is maipakita natin na hindi maganda or walang maidudulot na maganda ang paggamit ng pinagbabawal na gamot. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, dapat makita kung ano yung impact sa katawan, sa utak, at sa pamilya. Okay? That is on the part of educational uh, process. No? Tulad ng drug education. So, they are conducting symposium, seminar workshop para makita yung result ng drugs. So, ginagawa nila to as a school-based technique or sometimes they are applying this on community. Okay? So, nagkakandak sila ng iba't ibang klaseng seminars, symposiums para may pakita kung ano yung epekto ng illegal na droga. Okay? Next is drug information. It is an activity which focus on the dissemination of basic facts and cause of drug abuse. For example, nagbibigay sila ng mga leaflets or nagkakaroon ng commercial about uh, drug use. Okay? Doon tayo babagsak sa drug information. Magkaiba si drug information at drug education. Okay? So, drug education nagkakaroon ng symposium, workshop, lecture. Pero sa drug information, dissemination of information lang ang ginagawa dito. Tulad ng commercial, pagbibigay ng leaflets, uh, pagpo-post sa, uh, sa Facebook, yung mga yon Okay? Drug information. Next is, drug information includes the following activities. 
First is youth. Adult communication as in parent or youth dialogues and family encounters. So, kinakausap si parent and yung youth para magkaroon ng pag-uusap regarding the ill effects of drugs. Okay? Next is information-oriented classroom community activity. No. So, ang ginagawa ni DDB, nagkakaroon siya ng interaction sa school. No. Uh, kami noon, nung hindi pa pandemic is every year nagkakaroon ng seminars, trainings doon sa DDB. No. Pinapadala kami para mag-seminars tapos i-share din namin sa school yung mga natutunan namin. Okay? Next is broadcast media. Ito na yung sa part ng information, no. So nagkakaroon ng radio announcement about the effects of drugs, punishment of drugs, tapos yung iba nagkakaroon ng pelikula kung paano iwasan ng drugs, pinapublish sa announcement, programming newsletter, okay? Magazines yung mga yon. So that is broadcast media. Next is alternatives. So in on the part of alternatives, this includes a number of ideas for stimulating meaningful involvement for the youth that can complete successful with the demands of drugs and alcohol. Primarily, the services should focus on services or constructive and productive pursuits and recreational activities that are usually community-based. Okay? Such as voluntary service works. Alam nyo, um, pag take ng drugs, let's say alcohol, kung wala kang ginagawa, wala kang pinagkakabisihan, syempre, yayayain ka ng mga barakada mo, inom, di ba? Mamaya hanggang hindi mo na matanggal sa system. Pero pag busy ka naman, hindi mo na may isip ng uminom or mag-take ng drugs such as voluntary service works. Okay? And income producing activities. Anong mas gusto mo? Kumita o maglasing? Yun lang. No. Kung mas gusto mong kumita, eh di huwag kang iinom para meron kang hanap buhay. No. Pero kung ayaw mo ng hanap buhay, di mag-inom ka. Sirain mo yung sarili mo. Okay? Next is sports, arts development, chatter, choral, dance groups. Yung mga yon. So, involved in community activities para hindi ka mag-turn into drugs. Okay? Community fair contest and other recreational activities. So, dapat maging busy ka lang sa mga iba't ibang bagay. Huwag lang sa drugs. Kasi sabi nga natin, sa droga, talo ka. Okay? Next is intervention. This strategy is applied to experimenters and potential drug abusers. Activities like peer group counseling should be encouraged in every community. It is applied to the individual or group which needs specific assistance. Okay? So, bakit kasi nagdadrugs ang isang tao? Kasi because of unang-una, curiosity, kung ano ba yung tama. Okay? Pangalawa, yung peer group. Pangatlo, because of their problem. No. Mali. So, huwag tayong mag-experiment sa drugs. No. Kasi, pag nakapasok ka na dyan, may hirap ka nang makalabas. Okay? Next is, the program is focused on life career planning. The preparation towards a comprehensive career education helps young people to make the right choice. No. Para hindi ka mamislead. No. Para hindi ka maiba yung direction mo. So, dapat mayroon kang uh, career planning. Ano ba gusto mo maging pag lumaki ka pa? No, pag lumaki ka. Hindi. Pag natapos mo yung pag-aaral mo, ano ba yung gusto mo? Okay? That is life career planning. Okay? Parenting and family communication. Activities that, that fosters better understanding and wholesome family relationship. Yung iba, nagda-drugs kasi uh, hindi siya pinapansin doon sa uh, 
pamilya niya. So, nasesegregate siya. So, maganda kung mayroong uh, parenting and family communication. Ngayon, medyo nababawasan yung family communication kasi mas involved tayo sa pagtutok doon sa cellphone natin. Naging addict tayo sa paglalaro or sa Facebook. Next is effective techniques and learning activities. First, values formation or development. Okay? The articulation of personal values, its process includes choosing from alternatives and repeatedly and consistently acted upon. So, binubuo yung values ng isang tao. Okay? Kasi pag mali yung values mo, wala. Mali yung buhay mo. Next is role playing. A technique used to help students identify more closely with historical figures or characters in literature which help them in sensing problems and testing solutions without taking any great risk. So, role playing. So, nag-play sila then, ina-apply nila sa sarili nila kung ano ba yung impact ng drugs para mas mabilis ma-appreciate yung impact ng drugs. Okay? Next is decision making and problem solving. Techniques using conflict resolutions, focus on group problems, which help the students in identifying possible alternatives to solve the problem. Ito yung maganda. No? Kung may problema ka, kailangan mong hanapin yung solusyon. No? Kailangan mong i-identify yung possible solution sa problem mo. Hindi yung magdadrugs ka para makalimutan mo yung problem mo. Ganun kasi ang nagiging problema ng mga kabataan. No? Pag may problema na sila, takbo agad kay barakada and si barakada naman maglalabas agad na inumin at pulutan. So, laging ganun na lang hanggang malulung sila sa paggamit ng alcohol to escape their problem. Next is individual contact. The basic principles in working with an individual with the emphasis of making him feel at ease. Involving him by asking questions, supplying with necessary information, and arriving at a decision that will end the action. No. So, person-to-person -person relationship, individual counseling, house office visit, telephone calls or letters, information conversation or dialogues. So, ang ginagawa natin sa individual contact is tinatawagan natin or kinakausap natin, binibisita natin sa bahay nila para kausapin. So, ano bang problema? Ayun. So, tatanungin mo kung anong problema, ano ba yung magandang solusyon? So, kasabihin mo. No, para hindi siya mag-take ng drugs. Remember, face your problem. No, hindi tinatakasan ang problema. Kasi pag tatakasan mo, hindi mawawala yung problema. You need to face it. Okay? Pero pag ang mukha mo ang problema, yun talaga ang problema. No? Doon tayo magkakatalo. Pag problema mo yung mukha mo. So lahat naman tayo pinanganak na maganda at gwapo. No? Kaya huwag mong sasabihin na pamit ka. No? Sa iba, siyempre gwapo ka. May kanya-kanya naman tayong characteristics. Okay? Remember, face your problem and make solutions. Not turn into taking or abusing drugs. Okay? Next is small group approach. It involves contact with a number of people assembled in isolated group or in one of a series of related groups. This technique can be carried out by means of lecture or one-way discussion na tinatawag natin. Okay? A small group discussion or mutual interchange of ideas or opinions between a small group. So, nagpapalitan kayo ng ideas. No? Para ma-at-is ka. Okay? Next is symposium, group talks, speech, or lectures presented by several individuals, various spaces, or a single subject. So, Kung minsan, nag ako ng seminar, mag invite sila ng mag speak Okay? Yung isang drug addict na lulong na lulong, 
Tapos, uh, makukulong. Ayun, kukwento niya lahat ng karanasan niya hanggang maging successful siya ulit kung sino yung nakatulong sa kanya. So, yun yung ginagawa nila. No? Then, next is panel discussion. Discussion before an audience by a selected group or person expressing a variety of viewpoints under a moderator. So, may moderator, may nagbabantay, then nagpapalitan sila ng information. Okay? The bus session. Okay? The count of procedure. So, isa-isa silang magpe-present. Yung mga nandun sa isang group. Then, seminar, simulation games, debate, or field trips. So, suguro yung field trips nila, pupunta sila sa kulungan, no? Or, rehabilitation center. Or, worse, pupunta sila sa mga mental hospital. O kung ayaw pa rin nila, ipunta nila sa cemetery. Okay? Next is, community approach. This involves working together about their common problems, identify this, and implement the kind of action patterns for the solution of the problems. That this technique can be carried out by the following. First, community assemblies and barangay affairs, sports festival, or on tests in the community, or church-related activities. Napakaganda sana kung lahat tayo awera sa ganito. No? Lalo na ngayon pandemic, di ko alam kung existing pa itong mga community assemblies. Kasi bawal naman ang assemblies. Baka mamaya magkahawaan ng COVID. No? Uh, sport festival, bawal din. Kasi nga, uh, pandemic tayo. So, ayun, nababawasan. No? Pero, if in case, if you are planning to take drugs, ilagay mo lang sa utak mo. No? Nabuhay ka sa edad mong yan na walang drugs and nakayanan mo lahat. So, don't try drugs. Ganun lang kasimple. Okay? So, if you have concern, please uh, message me para mas masagot natin ng maayos. So, thank you for listening or watching my presentation.